How's it? Welcome to the garage. Today, I want to control this security light from my phone, and I'm going to do it by using this Wi-Fi switch. This is a switch from a company called Sonoff, and there's a bunch of cool stuff you can do with it. Today, I'm going to show you how to use it. This is the switch I'm going to be using. It's called the Sonoff Basic, and this is probably the simplest switch that these, this company produces. You get a bunch of other ones that do a bunch of other stuff. You get them that want to power. You get small ones that can go behind a light switch. You get complete light switches that you can change. You get dimmable ones. You get one specifically for fans. But today, I'm just going to use this one. They're very inexpensive. I think these are about 100, 115 Rand. I'll put a link in the description to where I bought mine. And they work with Amazon. Um, they work with Google Home. They work with IFTTT, which means you can integrate them into your existing home automation system if you don't have a home automation system you can control it directly from your phone and there's a bunch of cool stuff you can do with these to really make your life a bit more simple so let's open it up so you just get a little bag of screws you get the switch and you just get some basic instructions set those aside for now and let's just focus on the switch so if you just take off the end caps, you'll see in the simplest situation, you wire in neutral and live from this side, and then on the other side, you connect neutral and live of your load. And that's simple. Perfect. If you're going to do something like a light that doesn't have an earth, that's exactly what you need to do. You have to just cut your wire, wire in the live and the neutral, and wire out the live and the neutral. And that's as far as you've got to go. But if you've got something that requires an earth, maybe you want to control an appliance, you want to put it on an extension lead, then we have to make an allowance for earth. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do an example where you would also require an earth in this switch that you can then safely switch on an appliance from your smartphone. To make sure we make allowance for an earth, we just need to open this up and we need to make sure that we get an earth from this side to this side. So they just come apart very simply. And that's the cover off. And that's what it looks like inside. So what we're going to do is where we make these connections here, we're also going to have to leave a long enough wire to make a joint inside here for the earth cable and bring it out on this side as well. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's start by getting the thing we want to switch. In my case, it's a security light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where I want to cut the cable. And that's what we're going to do. You can even make your own cable. You can just get some wire, you can get a plug, you can wire the plug on and you can get an adapter on the other side that is gonna be useful for you. It's up to you. For me, I'm gonna use it as is. So let's just cut this wire. And now I need to strip it back. So the important thing to do here is if we look at our switch, I need to strip it back enough that I can get an earth wire all the way through here. So I need to make long, uh, tails on this even though I only need to make a short connection here I am going to need that long earth and I'm going to do that on both ends of the cable Okay, my wires are stripped. Just always inspect at the bottom where you stripped off the outer insulation that you've made no cuts into the inner wires, which I haven't, so we're okay. So let's bring back the switch. So, if here's the cover, we can see that our input is on this side and our output in this, is on this side. Now it's important that your plug goes on this side and your load goes on that side. And why this is important that you don't mix it up is the circuitry inside here does require power in order to receive the Wi-Fi signal. So if you put your plug on the wrong side, it's not gonna be powered up and it's not gonna work. That's why it's important to make this connection the right way around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure here and here and see how much I need to strip off to make my earth connection. Okay, this is what I've got. What I'm gonna do is I can see these two wires are gonna cross around about here. I've got a lot of space inside the circuitry over here so I'm going to try and make the connection around about there. 
but also want enough slack that I can maneuver this around to whatever position is required. So I'm going to make a connection here. So in order to do that, I'm just going to strip. First, let's cut these slightly shorter. Now I'm just going to strip the insulation of these two earth wires. And to make this simple connection, all I'm going to do is take these two wires and twist them together. I'm just going to fold that in half again, just to make it a bit smaller. And there we have got an earth connection. But it's important that we still insulate this. Because if this comes into contact with any of the contacts inside here, you could absolutely cause a short you could trip your earth leakage on your house, you can cause a fire. So it's important to always insulate connections. If you wanted to, you could also make a soldered connection here. You could put heat shrink on it. Uh, you could maybe use a small connector block, although I don't think there's really enough space. So for me, I'm just gonna twist the earth wires together and I'm gonna put some electrical tape around them. Make sure your electrical tape is nice and tight and it overlaps so that you've got no exposed copper anywhere on your connection. And there's no exposed copper sticking through the tape. That's also very important to make sure all the strands are twisted together and flat against the cable so that you don't have anything that can poke through your insulation. All right, there you have it. So now we can see that if we make the connection here and here, We've got just, just enough space inside our switch here to make the little earth disappear. So now what we need to do is I need to make our live and neutral connections and then we can put this back together. So I'm just going to cut the wires shorter again. And now we can make our connections. But if you've been watching carefully, you might have noticed I've actually made a mistake here. And that is that I haven't fed the wires through the casing here first, which means this earth wire is not going to fit inside. So let me fix that quick. All right, I've now fixed the problem. And now we can close this guy up and operate it like we would normally do if we didn't have to connect an earth wire on the inside. Like I say, this is only necessary in the situation where you need the earth. Maybe it's an extension cord, maybe it's an appliance with an earth and maybe um, some other reason but if it's a light or something simple that's only got a two-prong plug on it you can skip this step and you won't need the earth at all so the earth wire is nicely rooted through there and now we can just make the connections here to the neutral and the live on either side so remember brown is live and uh, blue is always neutral so that's what we're going to do now All right, the connections are made. Now I just make sure, give it a little tug with your screwdriver to make sure the connections are all tight. And then we can just put the end caps on. And then these secure with the screws provided in the box. So like I was saying before, if you don't require a, an earth cable, then there's no need for you to make this connection inside. Or if the opportunity arises and you do require an earth cable, you can also make the connection on the outside of the switch. That's also okay if it's not going to be an issue aesthetically or practically that you've got a connection on the outside of the switch. So just bear that in mind. You, If you need an earth, you don't necessarily have to make a connection inside the switch. You can also make it on the outside. The same principle. Just strip off long enough wires, make your connection, 
and tape it up well. But if it's on the outside, also just make sure that you restrain that connection so that it can't be pulled apart. So you could probably tape the wires really well and then tape them to the switch itself. All right, we finished wiring our Wi-Fi switch and now we've plugged it into the power. We can see here that this light with a little Wi-Fi symbol next to it is just flashing on and off. And that's showing us that this device is not configured and not connected to any Wi-Fi. We can test if the device is working by just pushing the button next to it. And that toggles the relay inside. So if it's off, it switches on. And if it's on, it switches off. So we know the power circuit inside here is working. But now we need to connect it to the Wi-Fi. Before you do that, you're going to want to go and download the EB Link app. You can get it on the App Store. It's available for iOS. You can get it on the Play Store for Android. And I'll put some links in the description below. Once you've downloaded EB Link, you're going to have to set up an account. And then you'll be ready to go. So now I've got my EB Link account open. And I've already got a few of these devices connected. And now I want to add this new one. So what I'm going to do is I need to put it into Wi-Fi pairing mode. To do that, I go ahead and I hold this button for three seconds until the Wi-Fi light starts to blink three times and then stop and then blink three times again. There we go. Three blinks, pause. Three blinks, pause. And now I know it's in Wi-Fi pairing mode. So now on the app, I'm going to go ahead and say add device and I'm going to go quick pairing. I'm going to enter my Wi-Fi name and my Wi-Fi password. Now I must mention that both your Sonoff device must be in a range of your Wi-Fi router and your mobile device needs to be connected to the same Wi-Fi for you to set this up. Once it's configured, this is a cloud operation so you can control your devices from anywhere as long as you've got a connection to the internet and you can connect to the cloud, which means when you're away from home, you can actually switch these devices in your house on and off. All right, the device has been detected. Now we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Security Light. Okay, now it's going to take a few minutes to connect to the Wi-Fi and we'll know it's connected to the Wi-Fi when the green light stays on and that's already done. So the green light is steady on in the device now and now we know that it's connected to the Wi-Fi. And there it is, security light connected to Wi-Fi and I can see it in my app. So now I can go ahead on my app and say on. Switches on. Switches off. All right. So now maybe you want to set this light to switch on and off automatically based on the time or a condition. Maybe it's a light outside your house and you want it to be on at night. So that's fine. We can do that right from the app. So what we're going to do is go to scenes. We're going to say add scene and we're going to give it a name. So here let's call it security light on. And we're going to add a condition. So what do we, what do we want to act this light on? So we can say add. So maybe you want to have it on a timer where you can set a specific time of the day um, or a specific time in the future. We're not going to do that. We're going to make it simple and we're going to say sunrise or sunset. So we can go here and let's say sunset. We've got the location is Randburg and we say save. Done. So now that is that is the condition. So if it is sunset, something must happen. So what do we want to happen? We want to switch the light on. So now we say perform. Add, which light do we want to act on here? We want to act on the security light. And we say we want to switch it on. Save. Done. So now security light on is the name of the scene. At sunset, it'll switch the security light on. And we say done. And there we have a scene. So now we want to switch it off at sunrise. So let's add another scene. So we go add we can call it security off security light off when do we want it to action it we want to go sunrise sunset sunrise done which device do we want to act on security light we want to switch it off save done done and there you have it now automatically at sunrise 
your security light will switch off and at sunset it'll switch on again. There's a bunch of other cool stuff you can do here as well. And this is not just for lights. There's a bunch of cool things you can do with one of these Sonoff switches with some of the other ones. And I actually have a pretty cool project coming up where I'm going to use one of these switches to control something completely different in my house. So keep an eye out for that video. Now remember, electricity is dangerous. And if you are ever uncomfortable working with electricity, please do not do it. If you need help, call a professional to get some assistance. You can't see electricity coming, but when it hits you, you know about it. And it can be fatal. Do not do anything you are uncomfortable with. But if you like this video or find it helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. If you've got anything you would like to ask or tell me, leave it in the comment section below. And until next time, stay safe.